MCM. You are up next, sir. MCM, I have it marked off. I don't, obviously, I will remember the hand when you tell it to me, but I have it in my notes that this is interesting. Yeah. And yeah. I don't remember why. So <laughs> well, it, it, you mentioned it was a good study in equity. Oh, it's an equity problem. Yes, yes, an equity problem. All right. So uh, this is a hand from Wind Creek. Well, Wind Creek, Bethlehem, uh, it's actually a 5-5, five, five, not a 2-5. And okay. at the, it was late at night, seven-handed, uh, straddle to 10. Main villain in this hand, unknown player. I knew the rest of the players. So anyway, the action preflop. Oh, my stack is the effective stack. At thirteen fifty. Okay, so thirteen fifty five five ten. So you're not super deep with the straddle, right? No, no. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Uh, pre flop under the gun one opens to thirty over a straddle, which was a little small. Okay. Most of the time, people go thirty five. Sure. Uh, two people folded. I three bet with king of spades, queen of spades, and the cutoff to a hundred, um, like. Uh, a little over three X. I mm -hmm. thought second thought maybe I could have gone a little more, but you know, a hundred bucks. It falls to the small blind who cold calls the three bet. So this is where things get interesting. The straddler calls when it comes back around to him and un unbelievably the opener folds. So there's three twenty five pre flop. So you've got two guys that have cold called three bets cold and the initial opener folded, right? Well, yeah, the straddler uh, was in for whatever, 10. Well, he's in for 10. I mean, he's cold calling for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so, anyway, uh, three-handed, we see the flop of king of clubs, nine of hearts, seven of diamonds. King of clubs, nine of hearts, seven of diamonds. So, you flop top pair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good top pair. And it checks to me. I bet 105, uh, which is a little, a little bit less than the third pot. Maybe I should have made it one and a quarter or so. But uh, anyway, both both players call. All right. So wow. So small blind and straddle call. Yeah. So there's 640 in for the turn. Okay. Which is the two of clubs. So big brick, right? Big brick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it checks back. They check to me again. Mm -hmm. And now I bet 300 into a relatively dry board. So so this one is um, when you take turn sizing here, you know, it's definitely when it's multi-way. Normally, you would actually take a, a probably a larger sizing here, heads up in a three-bet pot or in a single raised pot. Multi-way sort of strategy might say that you might go one-third here again. I just, I wonder here about the call call and the nature of the, the call call and the, just sort of the nature of the ranges that are taken three cold in between because you might have some pocket nines you might have some pocket sevens things like that i might take the one-third sizing and then you know maybe if get raised i'll evaluate but i know this is where this is going to in terms of what are we representing here yeah. i agree with you in retrospect i should have made it more like two 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 to two and a quarter but you know uh i bet the 300 mm -hmm. uh, 40 45 percent pot uh, the, now the small blind who has me covered uh, jam, you know, check raise jams all in and the straddler folds. Looking at the price I'm getting, the pot is like 2085 and I believe it was like 845 for me to call. Okay. So I'm getting like 2.4 to 1. Yep. So you're getting 2.4 to 1, which means how much equity as a percentage do you need? Do you know? 29%. Very one good. Divided by Point four, yeah. Very, very good. Okay. So there is, because we had that previous hand here too, there is something that I'm going to add here in a second. Um, for now, let's not imagine, this is structured hand analysis. You know, we do these things called stove in my head. I've had these podcasts before too. How do I sort of quickly do like a stove? Um, how do I figure out my equity against the guy's range in my head? Now, I'm going to throw out ace king here for a second, but we'll come back to that because if that's, a part of this guy's range as played. Um, that's definitely something different. So you're getting, you know, you need 29% equity here. So what do you think the range is here? What, what are, what are the hands that your opponent here? Um, do you think that he's check jamming? Well, before he was check jamming, I'm thinking, you know, maybe they have, 
a worse king, a king or, a, or the same hand as me. But, you know, uh, there's definitely a, a fair amount of ace king in his range. Ace, uh, the only like draw type thing I could think of was maybe like ace queen of clubs. If he cold called uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, the three bet with preflop or, or nines, I don't, or maybe a, a combo of sevens, but who's calling cold calling uh, a three bet with sevens. I mean, you know, I don't know if he, I don't know if this guy has ace queen of clubs next to act. I mean, it's possible, but this is how I would, we let's just go with my assumption that the range that I'm going to put in here is somewhat accurate and we'll do some math on how to do it. And then we can throw in some other hands here too. Okay. So I, I think that the things that sort of what you lose to here, remember this guy cold, cold call three bets cold. What you lose to here right off the bat is nines and maybe some sevens, right? So there's six combos of sets. Maybe we won't use them all, right? Well, we'll just remember that, you know, there's six combos of sets. And if he has those hands, you're drawing debt, right? You have 0% equity with one card to come. That's easy as a baseline, right? Now, what are you beating here? And these are ones that I think are possible, which are the interior Broadway suited hands that turn clubs, which would be queen jack of clubs, queen 10 of clubs, and um, jack 10 of clubs, which is a double gut shot, yeah, queen jack, jack 10, am I missing one? Uh, and queen 10. And yeah, I think that, that that's it. And look, who's call? Do you really think people are calling three bets that much with those hands? Uh, with, uh, yeah, I mean, with, with suited Broadway hands, I mean, sometimes you can't, you know, a lot of times you can't even release. Here's the thing. So unless I'm missing something here, I think that that's it, right? So uh, I'm going to throw out here king nine, um, for a second. I mean, some people are saying 10, eight. I think that that's a little bit of a stretch, but let's say that the guy has three combos. Uh, this is how I would do this very, very easily, because if we can logistically or, or in reality, make even combos of draws to sets, then it becomes very, very easy. Cause all we have to do is average the two equities. Now, Jack 10 of clubs is a 15 out draw queen 10 and queen Jack are, are both what 11 out draws. I'm going to say, a, that you probably have 75%, I would say, maybe. Actually, it's probably a little bit low. So it's 33 and 33% with the Jack Tunnel Clubs. And then what's it? 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 17. I would say that you probably have maybe like 73 to 74% against the draw portion of his range. So if we gave him three draws and you had 74% and then we gave him three combos of the six combos of sets, right? All you have to do is average 74 and zero. 74 divided by two to get your equity. There is no magic in poker stove that's all it's doing it's counting the combos and it's counting uh, and it's doing a you know a, a math problem so 74 divided by two is what 37 percent. if yeah. those if that was the thing and you only need 29 then you would have a call here now one of the things i did not think about during the email though but the last hand reminds me is if you throw some ace king in here you're you're now in big big trouble now now how many combos of ace king are there with you having king queen and the board how many combos of east should be, uh, there should be eight combos right there's two kings left and there is right there's four aces left so let's just say that he had um let's just say that he had two of those because this i'm gonna just follow me here because we have a six combo average at 37 percent so now we can give a two combo average and weight that into the total average at one third, two out of the six that we've done. So if he has ace king in two combos, you, I think probably have, we'll just say it's 5%. It might be, let's say 4%, just because it's- two, The three queens, right? Th uh, yes, excuse me, 6%, right, right. So let's say you have 6% equity. So now you have a situation where, and this is how we would weight it, because we have a six combo average and a two combo average, we can reduce that down to one to three. And now 
we can do an average with four numbers. We can go 37 plus 37 plus 37 plus six and average that out. So 74 and so it's 111 plus six is 117 divided by four is 29%, right? Right yeah. around 117 by 29, you know? Exactly so, what I was getting. so if you throw in two of the ace kings, it becomes very, very close, very, yeah. very close. Well, so this is yeah. what we're dealing with here. If you say, okay, two ace kings, someone can stove this too. I'm sure I'm probably pretty correct. I mean, I'll, I'll pull it up in cruncher here too on the side, but um, just to see if I, if I'm anywhere near it, I can't show it up. But what I was going to say is, is that, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if we think that that is what the, the range is, then I think it's probably pretty close to a call. I don't know if we can throw in some other hands. Now, even if you throw in more combo draws, it, if you throw in like 10, eight, here's the other thing too. If you throw in like 10, eight of spades or eight, six of spades, because we already have an average of 29%, Funny enough, those hands are right around 30%. It's actually not going to fit affect the average. So if we have a, a combo average right, right now of 29%, if you throw in 10, 8, and 8, 7, 8, 6 of spades into that, it's actually not going to affect it that much. So I think the question is how much ace king can this guy have? I, I don't really get on board with him just like check jamming um, king queen here you know, the same hand like you were talking about. So I think he has all eight combos that would, you know, of I'm what just, of, of ace king, all the, all the rest of the ace kings available. You think he's, he has, he, that, that would play this way. That wouldn't four bet pre that would remember. It's not just all eight that they'd have to all cold call mm -hmm. and also play this as a check jam on the turn. I True. mean, that, you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's maybe, Maybe it's possible. Now, if you think that he would do this with more than, um, if you think that he would do this with more than, you know, two of the ace kings, then it then it probably becomes a fold. I'm just doing this on the side. I'm putting in queen jack of clubs, queen jack of clubs, jack ten of clubs. I'm putting in um, the nines combo, right? Because we said three. Yeah, we said three. And then I'm just going to put in the ace king, just a couple of the ace kings, which it can't be a club, and you have the spade. And let's see what we get here on the side. Uh, calculate. Yeah, 28.4% MCM. So we did that in our head. That's what it is, 28.3 against uh, nines, queen, ten of clubs, jack, ten of clubs, ace, ten. So I mean, it's, it's really close. So I think it just really comes down to how often do you think he has ace-king here? And the other thing in the, in this player pool, uh, overwhelmingly people call a three-bet with ace-king. They don't, you know, especially deep, they don't four-bet out of position with it. Mm -hmm. For, you know, I would say 90% of the players. And since I didn't know this guy, you know, I just put him in a default that he could he could have cold-called, you know, with ace-king with all the combos. Tomato um, Soup says that with all ace king, ace nine of club sets and combo draws, all king queen and king jack, it's a call. Yeah, but king queen and king jack are a huge portion of that for MCM to get his favorability. I just don't buy that king queen and king jack are playing th this that often. I, I just don't buy it as a check jam on turn. You have stack depth left, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I, after... After I bet that I have, uh... let me ask you this question to final final. Why I think that that's inconsistent and ranging. If we go along with you, MCM, and we say, and you, we agree with you that most players will just cold call like Ace King, right? Two three bets. Those types of players that play in that manner are they going to check jam King Queen or King Jack here on the turn in a three bet pot? The types of players that are calling Ace King pre, are they check jamming it King Queen and King Jack on the turn? I probably not. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's what I think. All right. So what ended up happening? I, uh, I, I tanked for a, a minute or so and, uh, I finally folded and I was like, you know, he, he never showed. I never found out. Hmm. And, yeah. I was just like, Hmm. And the other thing kind of like gearing me to toward a call, at, and I guess Ed Miller and that Sonny made guy, they talk about commitment once I bet 300 into that pot, I basically put in 
like 500 out of my 1300 stack, 1350, which is more than 30, you know, a third of my stack. But, uh, you know, I mean, are you committed? I don't know. Uh, so the other, you know, one other thing too, to wrap well, this up, well, uh, some nut job maniac. Yeah. I'd call it off. Well, of course, because you'd be ranging him different. One other quick thing too, to wrap this one up, just because it's a really good strategy call. You can call uh, me Mike. Boy. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mike. Um, yeah. there are times when it's close to call. Like if you did it, if you in a capped game, and I strongly believe this, that let's say that you were, you knew exactly what he had. Let's say you knew ex exactly the range, right? You needed 29, Okay, you know you know to a T his range, um, what his range is in this spot, and you need 29 and you're getting 28. So whatever, you're giving up like 1% in a $2,000 pot, so you're giving up $20. <clears throat> there are times when it's close in a cap game where I would still call, and I would do it maybe even up to like 2 to 3%. There's a couple reasons why. In a capped game, if there are other bad players at the table that are beyond the cap and you want to get deep with them, this slightly less profitable call will show a future return in overall plus EV. And then second, um, there's an image factor where if you get a lot of chips in front of you, it allows you to win more. And then maybe third is your own mental game. And I always had really good mental game where if you lose the pot, it's not going to affect the way that you play, but against a specific opponent, if they lose, they will tilt. So those are three big ones where you can actually make a slightly EV, less to EV call in a spot like yeah. this. And so. quick question on the mm -hmm. end. Hypothetically, suppose um, he didn't jam, he just called. Um, my bet, it, do you bet the river all in? Well, what's, just, the, well what's the river? <laughs> I, well, um, that's what I'm saying. Say it's a blank river, three of uh, hearts or something. If he just called the turn and the other guy folded and the river was a brick... It's probably, if you're telling me that a lot of guys take three cold with ace king in your game, I can probably get behind a check back. Yeah, that's, a, yeah. I can, I probably can get behind a check back in such an extreme, you might be value owning yourself a little bit because you might, if you're not going to get king queen to fold and he doesn't have that much king jack, then you're, the, and he's got busted draws that won't call, then you're going to value on yourself at the end. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks All right, so Mike, much, Mark. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it.